Rory Models, kit review time. Today we've got Kinetics, brand new 148 scale SU33 Flanker D. Now, we've been after something like this for such a long time and we've been spoiled recently. Last week, you might remember, we actually reviewed Trumpeter's 172nd scale, but this is the big brother to it. And the one, to be honest, we've all been waiting for, is it actually in 148. So, as you can see, beautiful box art on the front. The, C, the flanker or the C flanker, I think it's just got so much nicer lines technically than the uh, the other SU27, the land based one. Having this forward canard area on here just makes it look more chunky and everything else like that. Some nice details just off the box here that we can actually see it's cartograph decals, which is always a nice one uh, and everything else. So there we go. That's the what we're looking at. I've got some of the things down here showing some of the photo etch, some of the work with the cockpit. Obviously it's fully foldable up as we'd expect with the planker and obviously some of the markings you can see down here. All right, and then we've been sport with this one. So it's K48062 is your kit number. Having a few aftermarket bits and pieces down there as well, okay. So that's there in the box, which I haven't looked in at all, as you might know. I don't look at boxes. Is that going to stay there? Is it going to fall over? Probably will fall over, so we'll put that there just to hold it. As you can see, stuffed full of plastic. As we spoke about when we were looking at the uh, other flanker in 72nd, as we said at the time, that is a huge kit. So, and because of that, in 172nd, it's big. So 148, as you'll see, is an absolute monster. So down here, we've got the instructions, the usual sort of cheap way uh, paper instructions, to be honest. But we can see we've got a newer format, although it's quite grainy, it's not the best image quality in the world here. It looks like low res. Um, we do have uh, the actual instructions. Okay, and as we can see, working our way through. So it looks like we've got a very detailed uh, ejector seat, which is very nice indeed. Some various parts going through to that, so that'll be easy to detail up. And then, looks like the cockpit is very straightforward. So it's just a tub. Okay, instrument panel goes in, the seat goes in. Uh, little parts just down here, for the, down the front, for the actual rudder pedals. But not much in there, but apparently it is a, a very nice piece, okay? One piece, um, obviously down for the, uh, we're assuming this is for the intakes, is it? Sorry, I'm looking around now. No, it's not the intakes, it's the nose well, actually. As I say, the way they've done this, because it's in sort of low grit, grittiness, you're looking at it thinking, what the hell's that? But this is the nose wheel well going through. Again, looking like we've got some nice stuff on the sides in that. Be interesting to see on the plastic. The main gear, uh, side walls, if you like, going in there. Very reminiscent of the way the Tomcat is done with the Hasegawa one putting them down into that gorgeous one piece lower uh, fuselage just down there like that okay and then a little few bits and pieces going in and then the cockpit itself being put in there remembering to open up the holes they're going to be very important for any type of pylon on this one okay and then it's up so you've got the doors and various bits and pieces being fitted into this one depending obviously open or closed i assume you could put them in both ways but you're actually putting them in now okay and then obviously you've got some nice pictures showing how it should be when they're actually all lined up there's the intakes okay so we've got the intakes a lower and an upper part to these looks like so you could be fitting those in looks like they're not all the way through but you've got some nice distance on them anyway you're going to see the actual uh, compression i thought you might get an engine with these but unfortunately you don't so you're just going to get the first stage compressor blades going in so you can see them if you are going to look down uh, down into the actual intakes system like that okay then a couple more part parts on there all right and then you're fitting the top part of the actual uh, intake with the grill doors down below uh, and everything else I'm not sure if you can actually put the actual doors in the closed position to seal them off the front, uh, but it uh, looks like those go on. The actual gear, uh, latch mechanism, how it actually attaches to the body, uh, a few little parts going down in there like that. The gear itself, multiple parts, looks very interesting. Be interesting to see how this goes on. Photo etch for the grilling uh, for this one as well, as it goes right the way through for the actual... Um, uh, what would you call it, um, FOD guard, uh, flick up deflector uh, that uh, Russian aircraft have. All right, so that's those going on like that. Main gear themselves, usual thing going together. Again, looking very nice. And another one for the other side. All right, then we're going on with the first stage missile rails being put on, or the weapon rails, and with the actual hook itself. Multiple part hook, actually, which is a different way of doing it, as you can see going down on there. Uh, you've got those fins at the back going on, and then obviously the main gear doors. And then the engine itself. So you do get 
pretty much uh, a nice burner can system in this. We always used to look at the Ares one for a replacement for the old uh, Academy kit. All right, but that looks like they're going to go in, which is going to give you pretty much everything you need. It looks like that could be an interesting work of photo etch that you're going to have to do to bend all that into position. Okay, and then side walls for the cockpit going in the upper fuselage half as it goes in. The refueling back of the probe system being put into those. And then top and bottom going together, which seems a bit odd when you've got all the gear and everything on the lower half. I thought it would go in a lot earlier than that. Okay, and then obviously refueling probe, uh, you've got the uh, the iris seeker going in on the front on the nose system, which is quite different. Usually it's attached to a clear part, but it's not. The HUD, various parts, lots of bits and pieces around for the canopy, which would be quite nice to liven that one up. Again, I'm not just saying it, but it looks, would look fantastic in an in-flight pose, just saying. <laughs> okay, canopy being fitted down onto that one, or you can have canopy closed, you might imagine. We've got the actual side parts going in if you're gonna have the wing fold option, all right? And then obviously you've got the uh, speed brake, two-part speed brake going on there. Pito tubes, things like that going in there. A little tiny gun barrel, uh, just gonna be fitted into the front. And then what's nice with this one, which is slightly different to obviously the other one we were looking at, is that we have got this first stage flap, which can be deployed, where obviously we were looking at the trumpeter version, it's molded in the up position. Okay, so I do believe that when it's all powered down, that's powered down as well. So if it's folded up, it'd be in the down position. The leading edge uh, slats on the front there being fitted on. Tailplane's going on, rudder. Then you've got the fold up fin at the rear that actually comes up to shorten its overall length. All right. No section going on, we've got the IFF uh, little pit up tubes going down there, a little yaw indicator uh, vein underneath as well going down in there, and everything else, okay. When it has the wing fold, the pito tube, it has a, folds in, I think it is, or is it removed, one of them, but I know it does, it's not on it. Okay, uh, outer wings, so again, you've got the aileron position and the flat position, you've got to drill out for the holes and obviously put all of those in. They look really nice, and let's face it, this thing folded up does look very mean. Okay, there's your wing fold sec sec section, all done for the other side, and then it's a case of putting them in. Looks like you get a little bar if you're gonna be going in the outer one with the straights and those in again for the tail planes. And then, obviously, if you're going with the folded up, you've got a couple more going to go in there for obviously the hook and latch system going round and the hook and latch system going round on the other side. The only thing I just didn't see was the tailplane in the folded position. Did it show it? I assume you've got, this is your option, you can have it in the power down, slightly droop down and then fold this up at the back. It's not showing it, but I assume you do get the option to fold up the tail because it is in the brake position. Okay, very nice, and then obviously we've got the marking call out, which is a little basic and a bit horrible that it's in black and white, but there you go, uh, we've got the system around there like that. So the same type of markings, to be honest, it is the same markings as what we saw in the trumpeter one, so you've got the tiger tail or the eagle tail, okay, and there we go. So looking at the decals, you can see beautifully done. They are really, really nice. But then this is Cartograph. We sort of expect it from Cartograph these days. Their decals are some of the best you can find on the market. They really, really are very, very nice. Beautifully done, good, solid color. Okay, this photo etch is uber, uber thin. This is like paper. In fact, it's no different from the polythene that it's in. So that'd be interesting, trying to keep that flat. But there we go, some nice touches down there. We've got the grills, we've got the fans, all this part for making up the actual afterburner rings, things like that for the injections. Very nicely done, compressor blades and everything else, but it is so thin that. That's one of the thinnest um, photo etches I've seen in a long, long time. That really is very, very nice. See how thin that is? amazing as you can see very nice beautifully done very nicely detailed right in the kit itself so starting in bag one obviously the big bag we have the top fuselage. So it's in a very nice, strong, stiff styrene. The first thing that jumps out of you is the actual recess details. You probably catch them all in the light there and everything else like that, I'm running around close up in a minute. 
beautifully done. Absolutely fantastic. And we do have a mix. So we've got raised details as well as recessed, which is totally correct. So these panels down here at the back, they're actually raised, which is a very nice touch. Hopefully you would like to kind of catch it and show it off to its full potential. But you can probably see, you know, running around all of these, it's got extremely nice details to all of this, even down to the riveting work that's actually inside the speed well very nicely done and this cockpit i must admit when i was looking at it through the instructions i was actually not that impressed i was thinking well it's all in one that is very very nicely done beautifully done when you catch this thing on the profile it seems to have that correct profile some of them i don't know they just don't look right that actually does to me very very nice down here on the inside we've got some formers obviously for showing holding things up some of these panels that you can see here that are pre-scored so these guys, you could, if you wanted to, open this up, stick an engine into it, and have it with all the details showing, which is a very nice touch that they've done that. Some details in the inside of the, the actual uh, wheel wells. So we've got the piping, various bits and pieces. We know inside the cockpit is blank because of, you know, there's nothing there. But generally, this is fantastic. Very sharp, nice details in recessed details that we can see down in here. So you can hear it. All very nice. And then right over here, you can see the blades. This is the forward canards, the little forward wings that it has that are gonna fit on the sides here. Beautifully done, lovely riveting detail, all in register. Okay, none of it fades away, it's all very crisp. That has to be one of the nicest kits I've seen of Kinetic. In fact, it's probably one of the nicest kits I've seen this year. I don't know, we're only a couple of months in, but that is really, really nice. I do like that. Okay. Then we can look at the underside. Very nice that it's all separate bags. It might seem, you know, a small thing, but it stops all that thing of like having parts on the, the fly and getting scratched and scuffed and everything else. It just protects absolutely everything. So there we go, that's the uh, the underside as you can see. Some very nice work just down there. We just dropped this top cam. We've got a little bit of trouble with one of the cameras today, so we're just gonna bring that in just a little bit. Um, as you can see the details very nice on the underside not quite as many as on the top but they're all down here all the riveting and everything else and again looks really really very very nice all of these no problem with it at all you know it's one of those things Russian stuff is nice because it has all the access panels and you know the riveting detail and all those things you know even though it's a modern aircraft it's still quite organic okay and it's got those things that make it all alive so down here we've got the actual uh, the tail system so these are the tail fins down here they are on a pivot they are going to be able to slant back so the instructions don't show it but that's not a problem the only thing is these guys here doesn't show it with a fold it shows it with a pin just out and doesn't show it with a, a folded pin. So it looks like it's not having it in the folded position. Now it wouldn't be a problem to do that, but these outer winglets do fold up on the tailplanes to make even more room, but it hasn't got an option because these are pre-molded in. Unless it's, it didn't show it on the instructions of cutting them off and not doing it. But generally looking around, we've got some hefty, you know, little in marks down here for inserting bits in and everything else, which is very nice. Good kit. No problems. I can't see any flash or any, well, anything really you complained about at all. This has got to be a Kinetics show kit because it is just so much better than what we've seen of theirs in the past. And, you know, that's basically, I have built a few of them. There's Sea Harrier and things like that, you know, and it was just always lacking something. Okay, this definitely isn't. So there we go, What some of the smaller parts. Interesting way they've done the nose. Uh, it's like a slip mold system that they've actually done to get that in and out, but it's a one piece nose section you can see down there. Be interesting to see what it's like in profile uh, and everything else. But generally, just looking around, you can probably see on some of these smaller parts as we make our way around it. Very nice down the instrument panel we can see down here. Again, beautifully done, some very nice details. All of this stuff is looking extremely crisp, incredibly sharp. And I have to say, you know, already I am sold on this kit because traditionally Kinetic were always better than Kitty Hawk, shall we say, but they were always just lacking something. There was just that little softness in the molding. There was always that little, you know, little details which could have been sharper, could have been nicer, and it always left you wanting just, you know, perhaps another six months in development. Let's just get those little details right and be happy with it. This, it looks like they've heeded what everybody's been saying 
and they've gone with it because this is head and shoulders above everything. I would actually say this is better than Trumpeter. Uh, and Trumpeter are bringing out some beautiful kits these days, but the detail on this is on par with anything that the tier one manufacturers out there are bringing out for us. And again, some all these tiny little parts, we've got no sign of flash or any real burring problems. All the actual ejector pins just slightly stepped but they're all the same, which makes it really easy to work with because then you know what you're doing and you can go around. And some of them, like these guys down in here, the ejector pins are so flush, you have to look for them. Okay, so I have to say, you know, thumbs up. That really is very, very nice. Okay, so down in here we have... The actual intakes, which looks like they're on a slip mold system. You can always tell a slip mold system the way that the actual sprue lines work and things like that, but very nicely done. Again, this is what we're saying. This new modern way of doing it is just so nice because I don't know how well the cameras will pick up. So I'm going to have to play the studio lights. They're too good. We just don't get the shadows like we used to. But you, this riveting is perfect from the edge up here all the way around. It always used to be that when you used to take these parts and look around them, you'd have a faded thing or you get a seam line or just a little something that would make it just not quite perfect all the way through. But these are really nice. The louver doors, a little bit crisp, uh, a little bit chunky, sorry. Not as crisp as perhaps they could be, but they are very nice indeed. And now I'm really gonna start hitting on this kit and being picky because I can, okay? But generally a couple of, you know, small little ejector pin marks in the actual intake, things like that, but you're not gonna see those anyway. But that is really nice. These one piece uh, intakes, they are absolutely phenomenally done. Beautifully done. Very nice indeed. Got a slight, and as I say, I'm really picking on it now. I don't know if the camera sees it. You might see it just there. There's a slight little divot, and that's because of that guy. Now, technically, if you're going to put the pylon on, which is the one that fits down on here, you're not going to worry about it, but you might have to sand it because I'm worried about that pylon rocking on it. If you just drill a perfect hole, it might rock on it. So you might just need to take that off, but you might see it. Both of them have got it. You see it on this guy here? And on this one down here, you know, you can see it's like nipples on there. All right, so might just want to keep an eye on that one when you get to it. Okay, so turn in here, this is going to be very much all the same. So if we just grab one of each. Okay, so we've got the pylons, beautifully done, very nice. One piece injection molded pylons. The riveting detail is absolutely perfect on all of that, very nice indeed, no problems at all. Okay, and the detail work in here, which I can't think what that part is, but it looks like it's a, a tip of something. But that is beautiful. Tiniest details down on something so small on an edge, which is really, really nice to see, okay? No problem with those. And again, these are the outer rail missiles. Very nice indeed, beautifully done in one piece, just like that. That's extremely nice. Very nice indeed. We do like those. They are some of the finest details we've seen. Okay, I'll have a look at them in a moment. I certainly get some plastic. And if this is new kinetic, I'm sold. Absolutely sold, love it. Okay, so down here we've got the speed brake, two piece speed brake, so this goes in this, so to speak, and all the rest of it. Beautifully done, some very nice details on all of that. These doors, beautifully molded and everything else. And on the inside, you can see we don't have any ejector pins and the riveting is really very, very sharp, which is absolutely fantastic. We've got the tail hook up here, which is some of the meatiest plastic I've seen that's been beautifully cast into something that looks heavy and workable and all the rest of it. So that really is very nice. And we've got some more of these tie down bolts and various things going down on here. Very nice indeed. Uh, so it looks like, which they are, which is amazing. These are one piece jammer pods, um, you know, on here, which is very nice. These are on the wingtips. These would actually go on the wingtips, not showing it in the picture, but these are the actual jammers. Very nicely done. One piece molded. And the amazing thing is, and I have to say this, we talk about burring a lot recently. There's very, very little burring. In fact, it's incredibly small, but these pylons, things like that, extremely well done. Absolutely beautifully done, beautifully cast. I must admit, I never for a moment thought the quality was gonna be this good. 
I knew they were doing it. I know it's been on the cards a while. Um, and I was hoping that, okay, I'll be honest, I was hoping somebody else might bring one out, like Trumpeter or something else. This is better than what Trumpeter would bring out. You know, I am glad Kinetic have done it. This is definitely their showcase model now. This is beautiful. Right, so weight on wheels, fantastic. The detail down in this brake system down in here is absolutely amazing. The pitot tubes are absolutely a joy to look at. The little veins, the various parts, even down to the refueling probe. I don't know if you can see it, but it's even got the little vent holes in the back end of it so it can vent. Uh, and things like that, fantastically done. All of these parts, the framing work, this is the demisting bar for the cockpit, uh, various things like that, all the details, absolutely sublime. No weight on wheels for the nose wheel though, which is a little bit odd, because you'd think it'd have a little bit, okay? Uh, and generally working our way around all these parts, they are absolutely fantastic. Again, this gear, there's no, <laughs> which is really odd, but I can't actually point now, a proper, there's a tiniest mark in like three areas. It's obviously a multi-part clamp down on here on this gear. But the beautiful thing about it is the burring is absolutely non-existent. There's a tiniest bit all the, on the little parts all the way around, but they're all actually on the, the higher areas. The flat parts, the recess hasn't got it, which is absolutely phenomenally clever. Very nicely done. Right the way down to the texture on the different tie rounds and the wraps and everything else look absolutely beautifully done. So I have to say, kudos on that one. That's really, really nice. Okay, so we've got down here, you get in the bag, where's the opening bag? Where's the most thing? There it is. Okay, so tailplanes again catch them in the light look at all that riveting absolutely phenomenal very nice beautifully done the differences as well between some of the hatches have got bigger you know sort of markings around them and uh, panel lining if you like and around it where others don't beautifully done the detail just down here on these flaps uh, well, I think this is actually an aileron absolutely amazing catch it in the light you see the riveting at different levels different shades of it and all the parts and down here we've obviously got all the leading edge slats flaps and the various bits and pieces all of them have the correct or assume the correct housing and various parts on it that is some of the nicest molding i've actually seen that is beautifully done on both sides you very very hard to pick faults in any of this kit and again, we're looking at slip molding with this guy here, the way it's in, coming in from the sides and everything else to give us a one piece where traditionally that might be a two piece. I'm trying to see if that's a slight sink mark in it, but it could be like it. <laughs> you know, it's one of those areas. Like, I'm not sure. I think the light's giving it a harder time than it really is. Maybe a small sink mark in there. Okay, so down in here we have... Uh, I can get in. Always sign of a good kit when you've got a pile of plastic bags. Okay, they're not in camera shot, they're all going to fall over in a minute. There we go, look at the details on that. Okay, beautifully done. All of that, no problem with it at all. You probably see or hopefully can see on the close ups, things like that. Got a phenomenal detail on all of this. And even on the inside, to be honest, all the ejector pins are nicely hidden out of the way and moved out. You've got all these little square boxes where everything's going to tuck into. It should be a straightforward, easy way of setting up your actual your flaps and your ailerons and all your parts in there just like that. A little bit worrying, I think we have got some sinkage, which is the first fault I can find with this kit. You catch it in the light, we have definitely got sinkage there because I can feel it. It's a shame. In fact, that's a real shame. It's going to actually be a right pain to try and get rid of that. But it's Russian, let's face it, with Russian stuff, you can weather it up, and that's what you do with that one. Um, I've got a slight sink mark in this one. It actually, it's a real shame, because this sprue looks like to be the sort of Achilles heel with this kit, which is gonna stop it being a 10 out of 10, okay? Because we got the sink marks slightly on it. But apart from that, obviously it's a heavy duty bracket in there. And if you've got it folded up, don't forget these are going to be on the inside, you're not going to see it. So if you're folding it, you wouldn't worry about it. Um, but unfortunately, 
that's just going to slightly let it down. This sink mark here, for instance, you will see it, so you probably would want to just deal with it. Hopefully you catch it like see it's down here and here, just on those, just got the little sink marks. But generally that's the first fault I can find with this entire kit. So we've got a couple of boxes, so we're actually looking for weapons. My word, there we go. <clears throat> The joy on the cake. Okay, so we actually have one piece cast or injection molded, slip injection molded weapons. So we've got the little R's there. Beautifully done. Very, very fine amount of burring between them. No problem at all. Let's take the old R27s. This is an ET. Again, beautifully done. You've actually got the hole at the back and everything else amazing they really are a joy to behold that's what we like about those okay and then in here i'm gonna say i must admit i was getting slightly worried because i couldn't see them again slip molded this is going to be the new thing you see one piece burner cans absolutely beautifully done no problem again, even this veining system is so sharp. Actually, that really is quite sharp. You run your finger on that, you know, slice your finger. Beautiful, absolutely phenomenal molding on those. That really is something else. Okay, last up, which is handy because we're running out of room. Okay, we have Which is a very small part compared to all of it, but we have the canopy. So don't worry, that's not a, a miss mold on the end there. That's supposed to be like that. What we actually have here is that's the, the little seeker that's going to go down there. On the SU 27s, it's right in the middle. On these ones, they're offset slightly to the side. Very nice, clean, crisp. It does have a center seam running down it, so you're going to have to take that out, which is a bit of a shame. But apart from that, no problem. They've all got a center seam running right the way through it. You can probably see. It's not crystal clear, but it's as near as damn it. I can't, I'll be being picky now to sort of pull that apart because that's no worse than anybody else's. It's just not uber crystal clear. But as I say, you've got to take out that center seam. You might as well dip it afterwards. So it doesn't really matter. You know, it's a, a straightforward thing on that one. So there we go. That is... I have to say, one hell of a kit. Kinetic, you've raised the bar a million times. You've gone from being halfway of a manufacturer, if you like. On the on the scale of one to 10, you're always a firm five with me. You've come out with some great stuff in the past, but you've always had that little, I don't know, things were softly molded, nothing was particularly sharp and everything else. This, you've just gone right up to a nine and a half. Slight problem with that little wing set. It's my only fault I can find with your kit. The rest of it looks absolutely beautiful. The instructions as well, they're a little bit horrible and it'd be nice to have a color sheet for the markings. I know you've got it on the box, but it'd be nice to have so the decal placements and all of the things on a nice bigger sheet that folded out so you can see exactly what you're doing and for the camera work and everything else. So the instructions are pants, the color call outs and the various bits and pieces, they're pretty horrible. Sink marks in the wings, um, but I'm being really, really picky on them and it's not fair because they've gone from being here to up here in this case of one kit. Okay, so from a company to be able to step up and go from that to that level is absolute kudos to them. And I'm sure in the future they'll probably rectify things like the little sink marks and let's get some decent instructions going, shall we? Uh, and then you're gonna end up with a manufacturer who's capable of bringing out a very complex kit. Let's face it, that's why there's not flankers by everybody's manufacturer you've only had the academy one then to convert it into this was a living nightmare so now we've got a mainstream very nice very tasty aircraft in a great manufacturing with very very little aftermarket required for this in fact i'd be really surprised if you you know the guys are going to come out you're going to get the obligatory zoom sets things like that but the cockpit itself is very confined um the kit ones are perfectly adequate I would have thought for something like that. So there we go, that is Kinetics, brand new, highly recommended, 148 scale Su-33.